Om Shanti, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to uh, the Tuesday workshop. So, as always, every Tuesday, we get together to reflect on the deeper spiritual aspects. And on that uh, light, today we have, uh, let's just stop sharing. Yes. On that note, today's topic is on stepping into our inner brilliance. <clears throat> so I see a lot of uh, familiar faces. Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. So we will, uh, how many of you are here for the first time in the gathering of Brahma Kumaris? Feel free to uh, turn on your camera or let me unmute yourself. You should be able to unmute now. Yeah. Is there anyone here for the first time to Brahma Kumaris? Cool. So everyone has uh, been here before. So what we will do is we will go a little further, a little deeper uh, into this topic of stepping into our inner brilliance, right? So this word brilliance, the word light, the word enlightenment, right, is stepping into the light, right? So when we say the self being enlightened, or when we say inner brilliance, right, there is a brightness, there is some inner energy, which is already there innately within us, right? So when we use these terms, it is in the context of the consciousness. I want you to bring your attention to the consciousness, right? And with that reference, we can go deeper, we can uh, step into that uh, uh, space and we can access, we can explore that space. The first fundamental concept in uh, in any kind of meditation or any mindful practice, any spiritual journey is being self-aware. And, and the tool that we use to be aware is your own awareness, right? And whatever you pay attention to, you'll be aware of that, right? So what we do on this spiritual exploration is we pay attention to our inner world. So what comprises of inner world? Inner, is com inner world is comprises of all our thoughts, our feelings, our experiences, our emotions, right? And we can individually recognize like, oh, I have these kinds of thoughts and I'm feeling like this, right? And the one, especially when we are talking about stepping into the inner brilliance, we are not just talking about accessing certain emotion or shifting certain things in your mind, like shifting your thoughts or something. We are talking about stepping into that energy of peace itself, right? So when I, the conscious being, step into that inner awareness, you feel it. And you're not only feeling it, it is not that you're accessing it, you can sense that presence inside yourself. When you are aware of that inner lightness, that inner sense of peace, that natural calmness, and that awareness of that inner peace will start expanding in your consciousness, right? So as you start expanding into that, it feels as if you're engrossed into that lightness, that inner beauty, that, that beautiful presence. So yesterday we had a very beautiful speaker, uh, Sister Roslyn. She was uh, mainly sharing her, uh, her personal experience when she first went to our headquarters in Mount Abu. And in that headquarters, she get to, she had this deep experience of inner beauty, right? She, the one word uh, she used is, uh, she is engrossed into that feeling, engrossed into that emotion, right? And, um, 
and one of the sister was asking like uh, mm, what should i be doing i i think about stuff and what should i be thinking what should i not be thinking and she said like no there is nothing to think there is no process it is just feel just feel and accept and step into that space right so today i'm thinking of let's explore that journey inward and start accessing that um, space and let's start feel let's start feeling that energy space here yeah? sounds good so anyone have any thoughts questions comments feel free to unmute yourself otherwise we will do a beautiful meditation and then we'll go a little deeper into this experience let's make this today's session an experiential uh, journey so make yourself very comfortable wherever you are as you sit gently keep your eyes open wherever you are sitting just observe observe all the sounds try to recognize as many sounds as you can at least 8 to 9 at least 10 different sounds try to recognize Keep observing. Once you identify all the sounds, You will be aware of subtle sounds. You will be aware of your breath. You will be aware of your own heartbeat. Try to observe. And try to be aware. without any judgment. And you will realize every sound emerges and dissolves. And just allow everything to emerge and merge back into that silence.
bring your attention Bring your attention to the energy. And you can feel that your mind is opening up as you start allowing every sound to emerge and dissolve your mind, the energy in your mind. becomes very open and now to now slow down your mind no thoughts no analysis just relaxing your mind give your mind a freedom give your mind permission to not to think not to analyze just observe your mind relaxing and now as you are relaxing your mind you will feel the subtle shift in the energy in your mind so you are working at a subtle level let there not be many thoughts don't even observe the thoughts not even analyzing not observing just let go and gently bring your attention to the energy in your mind your mind slowly settling down tell your mind there is nothing more to do it's time to rest and try to observe a restful mind as you're relaxing your mind you'll feel a pleasant energy filling your mind space you start feeling a sense of lightness growing in your mind
gently observe if your mind is drifting off gracefully let go of whatever is pulling your mind and bring your mind back to this practice practice of relaxing One of the signs of relaxed mind is the stillness, a very pleasant stillness starts growing in your mind. A sense of lightness starts growing in your mind. And allow yourself to engage in that pleasant lightness. A natural radiance. We are working at the level of energy. We are working towards that pleasant experience. And now allow that lightness to slowly start filling your heart, something closer to your consciousness. Bring that pleasant feeling closer to your heart. Bring that energy and let that energy starts growing in your heart space. And let it totally surround you. Let your sense of self stay absorbed in this pleasant experience, in this pleasant energy. this pure feeling. going to that pleasantness. And again, if the attention has drifted off, come back to the practice. Clear your mind. Engage in that sense of relief. a pleasant relief.
and stay absorbed in that natural lightness. Give some time. There is no rush. Stay absorbed. And welcome back. Welcome back. I want to give a pause. And then want to check in if you are able to feel that lightness. If you are able to sense that natural peace. You know, all we are trying to do is just putting things aside and you're naturally going into that beautiful presence. Yeah. I just want to check in if uh, anyone wants to share how it felt. Is it working? If at all, if it is working, what worked? If you can give me some feedback based on that, we can take it a little further. Yeah. Kelly, Sum, Sum, Sumita. Anyone? Chitra, Sangamitra. Hi, Harsha. It's Kelly. I um, I'm trying to figure out how to turn my camera on. Um, I don't know. I just I'm having one of those days that I was having, like I was getting to the like quiet, but wasn't getting um, like the feeling of lightness like I, I usually do. And I think it's like, you know, I live here in San Francisco and I think the weather <laughs> is really getting to me, like the fog, it was sunny for a few hours today and the fog has rolled back in. And I think it's just really, you know, but it, you know, it causes me to be anxious. And um, so I'm having, um, I'm having some trouble getting to that, like kind of peaceful place. Mm -hmm. So here is the suggestion. So, yeah, so I just saw that in the afternoon, it was really nice and sunny. And uh, mm -hmm. then the fog just uh, flooded. I just went for a bike ride on the bridge. It was like so windy. It is like solid to 40 miles per hour wind pushing you off, right? So, so having said that, so one of the thing, the beauty of meditation is if I am not doing anything, if I'm not doing anything, let things be as it is right? I'm not just talking about the weather or things around the, the noises of the street. I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about my own state of mind. Let it be. Just let it be. The minute you are aware of your present state, any small shift that you do you will get to experience that incremental shift. 
So what we are trying to do is we are trying to focus on that incremental shift. That's all we are trying to do. We are not trying to change the world. We are not even trying to change our mind, right? We are not trying to sort out anything, nothing. We are just trying to be aware. That's all we are trying to do because I need to get a grip of my own consciousness because especially when we are talking about stepping into that inner brilliance, who is it that is stepping into and where is it it is stepping into? I need to get a, a tangible grip on both of these things. Where am? Where is my awareness right now? What is what is taking over my awareness, right? So unless I am aware uh, of these two things, of my sense of self and what is occupying that sense of self, the minute you get a grip of these two things, even if you make a little incremental shift, you feel a very tangible shift, right? So that is why when we started our meditation, we started with, just observe, just observe the sounds. And whatever you're observing, that is filling your inner world also. That is filling your mind, that is filling your awareness, right? If I'm not aware of that sounds, I'm not even, it does not even exist for me literally at this point of time. It does not even exist for me because my, I'm not even aware of it, right? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, connect to all the things, all the sounds, background, the ambience and everything. And then your awareness is all, whatever is going on inside and outside, you're bringing that into uh, neutrality, right? You're in, inside, whatever is occupying your inner awareness, outer awareness, you're bringing into one level, right? And as you bring it to one level, it is easy to make peace with outside world because it is not that crazy at this fraction of second, right? It is not that bombs going off, right? It is like, okay, there is some car passing by, just, just observe. And then you realize that it passed by and it's gone, right? And then you feel a relief, right? Every sound emerges and then it just dissolves, emerges and dissolves. And then it becomes very natural. And then your awareness naturally falls on where is this sound coming? Where is it emerging, dissolving into? So then your attention will fall on that backdrop of that silence. Every sound emerges from silence. And once the sound is gone, there is silence. Every sound is surrounded by silence. Right? Sound is just like a spike, but after the spike, there is all silence, right? So what it will do is it naturally brings my awareness and I will be aware of the silence in this chaotic world. When I make peace with all the sounds, my attention goes beyond into that silence. And then you'll feel very solid inside. Your outside, inside becomes very solid, right? So that is one uh, tangible exercise we can do. And then the next thing what we can do is once you do that, you will very literally feel the energy start shifting in your mind. The energy, that sense of, uh, um, you know, especially when we are anxious, it is, it, 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 it sometimes even hurts your head. Like you may even get headaches or migraines or things like that. Right? As you're observing, you can even feel uh, physical sensations of calmness filling into your mind. It generally, it slowly starts calming down your mind. Even you can feel in, in your head, it is calming down. It is, it is the sense, some sense of uh, a peace starts uh, uh, soothing your mind. And, then you'll, and that is where you start paying attention. Right? As you start paying attention, then you realize that what, where is this peace coming from? Where did it go otherwise, right? And it is again to do with the sounds in your mind. Every thought is a sound, 
right? So I think about, for example, I think about that, oh yeah, it was a nice and sunny day and all of a sudden it's all foggy. That itself is a thought, right? And then our attention falls only on that contrast, but let it be. And then you go beyond that. So then your mind is accessing totally different energy, which is nothing to do with the sunny day or a foggy day, right? So it, it is something pleasant to try it out, you know? So more I start accessing that, more I start uh, um, creating a taste for that uh, pleasant calmness. So then it will becomes like a uh, solid uh, foundation for your mind, right? So then whenever you need to think, you think, and by default, you go back into na that natural silence. And this is nothing new. And as a children, if you look at the children, children have this ability. You can see children when they're playing, they're fully energized, lot of energy. And at the same time, they're fully focused on whatever they're playing. They're so engrossed into that game, whatever it is, right? And as long as they're playing, they're fully present, fully alive, fully absorbed. And once they get tired, nothing exists for them. Nothing exists. Even their favorite cake next, sitting next to them, even that does not exist. And they're so deeply engrossed in that pleasant stillness. Right? It is the same thing. We have this ability. And that is the inner light that we want to step into. Right? And we always have it. We always had it. We always know how to access that as a children. Naturally, we have that ability to go back to that natural stillness so that you rejuvenate when you come back. You take your mind into that pleasant stillness as if your mind is dipping into that energy field and it is soaking in that energy and your mind is fully charged. And when it comes, up, comes back into the consciousness, whatever it thinks, whatever it interacts, it is charged with this pleasant energy. Right? It comes alive. That energy is coming alive. So most of the time, what, what actually is happening is it is like an empty calories. Like, so we are doing this, we are doing that. I am thinking about this. And there are a lot of things to do list, a lot of uh, uh, things that uh, we are having our own targets, right? And we are not taking a pause to experience, right? We are just running, running, running. Physically, we are running, uh, not just physically, intellectually also we are running, right? So I have to think about this, I have to think about that, I have to talk to this person, I have to figure out how, to, how this is going to happen. Your mind is also thinking, it's all just working, working, working. Your mind is not taking a pause to refill that energy so that your thoughts will have power. Right? The thoughts comes into your expression and you interact with other person. That interaction will be charged with that pleasantness. right? And that expression of that pleasantness is what creates the experience. Follow, right? So, so the key here is to, to minimize to-dos or minimize things to think even. And instead, we start increasing the things to experience. What are the things to experience? The, the experience of the energy, experience of the peace, right? And especially before trying to experience something stimulating, I want to, I want to um, uh, reset. You know, when we go to sleep, we wake up fresh. And how deep and how sound is your sleep, that fresh you come up, come, come back alive, right? And that is exactly what we try to do in meditation. What we are trying to do in meditation, we are trying to take our mind into that pleasant space where mind, you start pulling your mind together, pulling yourself together, and you start there is like in internal processes starts working, right? So when we sleep, what happening to our body? 
right? Our metabolism starts working, and then there's a lot of uh, repairs going on uh, in the uh, in the parts which does not happen when you are uh, conscious and moving around. For example, repairing the muscles of your heart about your uh, metabolism, right? and repairing all the muscles and tissues in your body. All of that thing will happen when you go into that deep sound sleep. And when you wake up, you feel your body has charged. What actually happened, all the repairs are done. Means everything is fully uh, fresh and strengthened and recharged, right? So they always say there are two things that gives you energy, food and sleep. When you have a good sleep, you feel energized because all the scattered energy is all pulled together and then, and then evenly distributed and given enough attention to different parts of your body so that it is, it, 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 there is no uh, wear and tear going on there when you, when you come back into consciousness, in, into action. Right? It is exactly the same thing that we need to do for the mind. Right? The same thing that we are trying to do but we are trying to do consciously, right? We are consciously taking our mind out of thinking and being conscious of how pleasant it feels and trying to hold your mind in that pleasantness and hold that pleasant energy in your mind. And then you'll feel your mind starts uh, repairing, you know, your mind starts calming down, it feels pleasant, it feels lighter, right? It feels as if your mind is settling down, right? It's all scattered mind is pulled together and then your, your sense of focus starts growing too. Cool, right? So, so I want to go beyond words, right? Because we have heard enough things <laughs> on spirituality, and spirituality is very effective uh, when you experiment with it. More I start experimenting with, uh, with, with the spiritual concepts, uh, more you'll start learning how to navigate. You know, some things click, some things may not make sense. So it helps you to navigate through. Like some concepts work, right? And other things uh, uh, that always uh, uh, used in spirituality is... Uh, visuals, right? And uh, our mind works, uh, um, all our uh, uh, memories are visual by nature. So one of the things that we try to do uh, is we try to create this panoramic view in your mind, right? Try to, as you start stepping back, right? Like a bird, stepping away from the ground, flying above the ground. Fly, it, it lives on the trees, but it flies above the tree. Its nest is on the tree, but it flies beyond its own nest and then rises higher. And it's not just looking at one tree, now it is looking at the whole forest and it can look at the whole mountains, right? So in other words, you can see your small, world in the context of the bigger world. So as you raise your mind, so you can literally visualize yourself, right? You can literally visualize yourself raising above your nest, your home, You're raising above your home and all the people in your home. And then you raise above and all your neighbors and you can raise above, you can see the whole county, whole city, and you can see all the places you have visited. And then you can see from a distance. And all the thoughts connected to that place, let it be on that place. And clear your mind. Right? So it, it gives uh, uh, some, some traction to your uh, practice. You know, visuals give some traction to your practice, especially when we say that, when we say that let go of this thinking. Right? So how do I let go? It is occupying my mind. It is, it, it is spinning in my mind. It is all this repeated thoughts again and again, going on and on and on, right? And now we are saying that let go. How, how do I let go? I'm, I'm stuck. You, you feel as if 
uh, it's like compulsive thinking. It's like something else, some other force is pulling you to keep thinking in that way again and again. So, so you need something to, to, to step out, it means you need something to put it back. So our mind thinks visually also. So when you have, when you create this visual in your mind, you can correlate whatever thoughts that is filling your mind, you can correlate that map it back to the geography. Literally you can put it to the geography of the earth and then map your thoughts back to that. And then gently raise a bow and, and then start telling your mind that how does it feel if, I, if my mind is going from these thoughts to these thoughts, from thoughts of this geography, for example, thoughts about your home, you're stepping away from thoughts about your home and you're stepping beyond. How does, what kinds of thoughts fills the people who are beyond this house, this workplace, this neighborhood, this culture and all other contexts. And then you slowly start putting your thinking to the geography, right? And you just map it back there and then allow that gives some traction for your mind that gives your mind a placeholder for your thoughts. And once you it finds a placeholder, it goes beyond. It helps you to go beyond, right? It is like a workout, right? Especially when you want to go to the gym, right? So how does it work? Like initially, you feel exhausted, right? You say like, oh, no, I don't feel like, I don't feel like. You know, once you get a jump start, some inspiration, then you step out of the house. The minute you step out of the house, it is very easy. You take one step after another step, one step after another step. And then pretty soon you'll, you'll realize that you're one block away from your house already, right? And then you're already into a park. And then your attention is already falling into what's happening in the park. And then there is this happy dogs running around, chasing after the ball, and, and then the kids running around, right? people singing and people dancing, people skating. And then your attention falls on a whole new different atmosphere, different environment, literally, right? And then you slowly start moving. As you start moving, what is actually happening? The energy starts moving inside too, right? It is the same thing when I, when I keep my mind only in this stagnant place, Right? I'm thinking about the same thing again and again, the house and people and things and about my past, about my future and the same thing. It is the same stagnant environment and then stagnant energy starts filling up my mind. Right? So it is this visualization is a very powerful and effective method where you, you go out of sight, out of sight, out of mind. There is the saying also, out of sight, out of mind. And the power of mind is you can create this visualization sitting at your home, right? And if you can step out of the home, go to the park, walk around, and then engage your mind with the pleasantness of that atmosphere and the energy, you feel refreshed. Your mind gets refreshed by that, right? But you can do the same thing Visual, by visualizing. And you can sit, you can imagine yourself sitting on a beach on a nice warm day, on a beautiful clean sky, right? A clear sky. And then this beautiful sun, the warm sun is slowly sinking over the mountain, sinking over the ocean. And the whole sky is lit up is lit up with these beautiful colors, the golden color, this pink, beautiful shades of colors. And then you can see these colors painted on the clouds. And you can feel the atmosphere. It is warm and it is slowly cooling down. And then you can see the birds flying by. And you can feel the warm sand slowly cooling down beneath your feet, right? And you can hear the sounds of the waves crashing on the shore. 
right? And you can create this beautiful visualization, all the information needed to create this beautiful atmosphere is already there, right? So the minute you start creating that beautiful atmosphere, your inner world starts changing. So your mind enters into that world and it starts experiencing that atmosphere. The same thing happens in the dreams also. And what, what is the difference between a dream, a good dream and a meditation? Again, here you're consciously creating your inner, inner awareness. In the dreams, your inner feelings will start painting that your inner world, right? Now we want to create our own inner world based on what we want to experience. So we want to experience peace, we want to experience love, we want to experience happiness, right? And, and it is not just like, uh, it's not always that we are trying to seek for some kind of external visuals to, to, to go into that experience. Definitely it is, a, it is a good start, but we want to go beyond that. Once you start getting a feel of all of this thing, your attentions will go beyond visuals. Then your attention will fall on the energy, right? And then you'll start getting access to the vibrations. Right? Your ability, our mind is very powerful. Our mind can tune into as, as easily it can create this visualization in your mind and totally transform the atmosphere inside your mind. You can as easily tune into the vibrations, the energy around. You can slowly start tuning into the energy. And you can feel that energy naturally um, emerging from inside. As if you're creating this silent space inside your mind and you're invoking that beautiful lightness to emerge into your conscious mind. Right? It is this energy which you're trying to invoke. So then it will your attention will start becoming uh, focus more on the energy and, and the energy, which is so, uh, it feels intangible. It feels very slippery. It feels very subtle. All of that becomes very tangible, very uh, palpable, right? And then your mind can, can access that, feel it, and then tune into that, right? So as you start feeling, stepping into this awareness, that vibrational energy becomes very natural for you. And that is why, um, I mean, uh, whatever energy that you're tuning, your mind is tuning into, your energy of the mind is nothing but energy of your presence has a direct influence on the nature, on this physical elements. It has a direct effect on all the atoms, molecules, whichever is surrounding you, right? And that is what, when they take a picture, the special cameras that they use to take a photo of an aura and all other stuff, it is the effect of that shift of energy of your mind. When your mind is becoming very peaceful and accessing that palpable energy, and as you start focusing on that, that light starts growing bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So I, the conscious being, can experience that subtle energy, but that subtle energy does not just be, stay as invisible, but that subtle energy starts affecting the physical. It literally starts affecting the physical. It literally starts affecting your brain structure, right? It literally starts affecting. Uh, so one of the uh, technique, uh, one of the term that is used in, in neuroscience is called neuroplasticity. It becomes your mind, your brain becomes so fluid and so subtle that your brain will start rewiring in line to the energy that you are absorbed yourself into. 
right? And the power of your brain will become much effective, right? And of course, brain is the is the is the main organ that controls the rest of the energy in your body, right? All the chemical energy that is uh, that this body is made up of, right? All these enzymes, all these en endorphins, and all of this har uh, hormones and all of the stuff that is that this body is made up of, right? This chemical energy which is made up of is directly under the effect of the brain chemistry, right? And the if you can affect your brain by tuning into this energy, vibrational energy, this very peaceful, pleasant energy. And that is a power of mind. It is not just a, a invisible force. You are making invisible visible. You are making intangible very tangible, right? And then you slowly start bringing. So the key here is as I start stepping into that pure brilliance, that pure loving energy inside, I bring that back into my expression, right? It, it, it even changes your body language. It even changes um, uh, your energy levels, right? Does anyone feel exhausted physically? after uh, by evening by the time you come back in the evening you feel exhausted and especially i can i can share my own personal experience that especially working from home in technology there is so many zoom calls back to back and then working with computers right from the time you wake up till the time you you wrap up even in the lunch time there is this lunch time meetings if you actually see physically, you're not doing anything. You're just sitting there before the computer. You're just talking. All the muscles that you're moving is only here and your eyes. That's all it is. But you feel so exhausted, so drained, enervated, right? So why is that? Because my mind is what when I'm constantly thinking about something, talking to somebody else, your mind, there is a strain, constant strain to your mind, thinking, 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 thinking. And all of that overload, right? Like constant uh, um, load that have, I have in, in influence or not, uh, I put my mind to, all of that thing will start firing back on my neuro, plasticity and by also my uh, neurological energy, but also at the same time, it will start affecting the energy in my body, right? And then you feel heavy and then you feel like just tired and exhausted because there is no, not that much pleasant energy which is flowing in your body either, right? The quality of mind is directly proportionate to quality of your body. If I have a very pleasant mind, you'll have a pleasant body too, right? A peaceful mind will create a pleasant energy in your body, right? All of these endorphins and all of the, all these pleasant, en pleasant enzymes that are, that are, this body is in a way, it is a chemical factory, literally, right? And who is telling what chemicals to produce, right? It is your mind. Right? So that is a power of mind. So I want to engage the power of mind to create this pleasant energy. Right? So I'm going to give a pause there because uh, especially when we talk about these concepts, sometimes something will get slippery and uh, sometimes uh, it makes sense and sometimes some people can relate to these things like, yes, I understand what you're talking. And some people will say that, yes, when I had this thing, I felt like this. And when I did this, this is how I felt. So you can, some people can literally see the contrast, right? I just want to uh, pause here and then just quickly check in if anyone have any thoughts, comments, Otherwise, we will uh, step into a nice meditation again. Anyone?
Ariel, you want to share anything? Any questions? I think Sumita has a problem with her net, internet. Okay. Cool. So let us do one thing. So now we will take um, um, to the next level. Unless anyone have any questions or if you think that uh, 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 this is working out, I will go to the next step of this thing. So the next step is relationship. Once you get access, once you tangibly uh, get a grip on your consciousness, and once you get a grip on your consciousness and then you're shifting your consciousness from uh, uh, stress to relaxed stillness, right? Get a grip of your consciousness and shift your consciousness to this relaxed stillness. And then as you shift, now you get a grip of that pleasantness, right? And now you have this pleasant energy. Right? So now you have this pleasant energy. That is a good start. You'll start reinforcing your sense of self. You start reinforcing your sense of peace. And now I want to connect to something. So I want to connect this energy to something which is bigger. Right? It is, it is like osmosis, you know, especially um, one of the things. Uh, uh, which example works well? Um, the example is more like, uh, just imagine there's this huge ocean, right? And uh, um, you take a whole bucket full of uh, salt, right? And then you take that bucket full of salt and then you add it to the ocean, right? Do you think the ocean will become more salty after adding that one bucket full of salt? Nothing. It just dissolves into that, right? Okay, so now let's take it uh, to another example, to, a, to the sweet water, which is like lakes, right? And now just imagine you have a bucket full of uh, dirty water, right? And then... Uh, uh, you kept it aside, right? And you kept your that bucket full of muddy water aside. And after you keeping that muddy water aside, what happened is all that mud slowly starts sediment, sedimenting below, right? And then there is this clean water which is floating on the top of the bucket, right? So now you can sense that, oh, there is this uh, clean water. So there is this clean water. And at the same time, you'll see there is this mud below, right? So any time somebody comes and uh, pokes you or stirs up your feelings or emotions, all that emotion starts stirring up and then filling up the whole consciousness, right? You consciously made an effort to go into that silence, to allow all that triggered emotions to settle down in the bottom of the bucket, and then you consciously immerse that clean water. The practice that you did is stillness. Once you bring into stillness, the clean water surfaces, that cleanliness, that calmness starts filling your mind, right? And all of a sudden, you stepped out of your meditation and then you start me, you met, you met somebody else and then they said something and it start in stirring up your past emotions again. And as you stir up the bucket again, all that effort that you have put will start coming back alive, right? And again, you have to do effort, right? So now the first part of the meditation is something like that, but it is good. It's a good start. And now just imagine, now just imagine you take this bucket full of whatever is filling up your mind, filling up your heart, take this consciousness, and imagine yourself merging as if like a bucket full of muddy water getting mixed into a huge lake, a very clean and crystal lake, 
as you put that dirty water into what happened to your consciousness. Your consciousness is not just limited. Your consciousness of peace just expands. And whatever dirt that is filling up your heart, it just dissolves into it. And then it just settles down into the bottom of the lake. And your whole consciousness is filled with this pure peace. Follow, right? So when I'm giving this analogy, so what I'm trying to do is you're trying to connect to that consciousness, some higher consciousness, which is like an ocean. It is an ocean of pure consciousness, ocean of pure love, that which will never get disturbed. And you try to relate, means it, you need two things to relate, right? You relate to your mother and these two people related in the relationship of daughter and mother. And that builds a relationship, right? So right now, in, in the concept of meditation, when I am self-aware that, oh, I am this conscious energy, I am this energy, right? But now the energy in my mind is all mixed up. The energy in my heart is all mixed up. My presence is all like very limited. I'm struggling in a limited space, right? And just imagine you raise your awareness into that vast pool of energy, that vast pool of love, that pool of calmness, right? And you just allow yourself to dissolve into that awareness. So your sense of lightness, your sense of peace just expands beyond boundaries. Your, your heart space just opens up. You become very big hearted, broad hearted. And it is not just as a, as a concept, but you start feeling that kind of energy, which is abundance. You, feel, you start sensing that sense of abundant love, endless love. And once you stay, once you start experiencing that higher connected consciousness and that light when you bring back and that higher awareness when you bring back into action. So your influence to shift this limited um, um, disturbances will just dissolve and it will be flooded with love. You will be pouring love. You will be just showering love. And, you're, you, and, and that compassion naturally comes for others. It is not empty compassion, empty words, but it is, it is backed by this solid empowering energy. Right? When you are compassionate to other person, they feel that love and then they feel very uplifted in your loving, loving awareness. And then you start extending that loving awareness to others and then they feel uplifted. And who is getting uplifted? Their awareness starts getting uplifted. They start feeling love. They start feeling, oh yeah, that is small. I got something bigger now right? Something more beautiful, something more pleasant, something which is last, long lasting, right? So, so the second part of stepping into our inner brilliance is, of course, taking time, settling down, going into that inner stillness, that will give access to your spiritual presence. Once I get access to that spiritual presence, I raise my awareness, I raise my awareness and start connecting to that which will never change, right? So some of the words that are used in Raja Yoga is Sada. Sada means like always. Shiva means something which is benevolent, something which is always beautiful. So when you connect to Sada Shiva, like something which is always benevolent, always altruistic, it's some, if you want to put visual to that, it is like endless pool of energy. It is like an ocean, which has no, I mean, the oceans here has a boundaries, but just imagine like a sky, 
like the space that is surrounding us, which, which is endless. It keeps going on and on and on. There is nobody has ever found the end to this physical world, right? This space, just imagine that kind of space. You are stepping into that energy pool, which is endless love. It is pure, which is very palpable energy, right? So that is how you start relating to that. And then you start staying absorbed and engaged in that. So, so that is the second part of empowering ourselves and enriching that brilliance within our presence. Right? So, and does anyone have any questions or comments? Uh, I would like to uh, go into practice some meditation. Is that okay for everyone? You can raise your thumbs or say unmute yourself if this is working. If you have your cameras on, that will definitely help. Yeah, thank you, Sangamitra. Cool. Okay, thank you. So, so now just imagine and look around in the Zoom itself. You're not alone. You have almost nine other people with you who are also tuning into what you're, th what you're thinking, what you're feeling. And this collective feeling, feel this collectiveness. And this collectiveness helps you to raise faster, right? So wherever you're sitting right now, make yourself very comfortable, right? If you're sitting, uh, Feel free to cross your legs and that keeps naturally your spine straight and the energy is naturally flowing, right? So for the next 10 minutes, the practice is of shift of energy. Try to tune into this energy of your breath. Your breath is called prana. It's a breath of life. Every breath, you're inhaling energy, a life-giving energy. Observe this pleasantness, this pleasant life-giving energy filling your body. Feel this energy. Feel your breath around your nostril. Feel, more you relax, more you can feel. Relax your muscles around your jaws. Relax the muscles around your shoulders. And try to visualize with each breath, visualize this energy filling your lungs. Inhaling love. and exhaling all the heaviness. Inhaling peace. And allow the muscles to soak in this pleasant energy. Relax all the muscles around your heart. With each breath, feel the muscles expanding in your belly, in your lower back. Your shoulders, your elbows. 
And now just allow. Very tangibly. Feel the sensations and allow this pleasant sensations to expand in your body. Relaxing deeper and deeper. Each breath, a fountain of pleasant energy is flowing into your brain. Be very gentle with your mind, with your brain. With each breath, you can feel the subtle movements in your brain. Feel this energy. And allow the muscles in your brain to relax. As if with each breath, you're holding this pleasant energy around the tight spot in your brain. Like a mother, Feeding a child, feed your brain with this much needed oxygen. You can feel the subtle movements, subtle stimulations. Just allow everything to naturally flow. Now start observing. If there are any thoughts in your mind, let go and keep your mind with this experience. A relaxed mind. You know, slowly clear your mind of any thoughts and let your body rejuvenate, recharge in the stillness.
if i am not thinking there is no stimulation in my brain and now gracefully take your mind into this visual as if you're taking your mind into this very peaceful light it's like a golden light the kind of light that we see on a clear sunset just imagine that atmosphere this beautiful sunset over a still lake you can see the reflection of this golden sky on this lake it's very calm it's very fresh space is filled with that peace It's a very loving space. That whole atmosphere is filled with this loving vibrations. Just imagine your mind stepping into this place, which is full of love and lightness. Try to. experience with your mind the grace of that loving light that graceful energy caressing your mind that graceful light seeping into different corners of your mind this graceful light this pleasant loving energy reaching all corners of your consciousness dissolving any limited boundaries dissolving all your heaviness restoring peace restoring love allow your mind to 
to flow into this ocean of love. Let this graceful energy fill your awareness, lifting off all heaviness. Let there be peace inside. Let this peace pervade all around you. Oh, I, the conscious being, Shanti, am an embodiment of peace. Go into this awareness. Of embodiment of peace. Om Shanti. Let that inner peace radiate into this universe. Limitless awareness, boundaryless awareness. Bring this higher loving presence into this world. Let this world be filled with this loving lightness. Let every being on this earth feel feel that love flowing through your heart. Step into your loving presence. Let that expanded awareness be filled with this loving presence. Feel that sense of abundance as you hold everyone in your heart. Stay combined in this love in this light. Oh, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Carry this subtle presence into the rest of the evening, into your sleep, and let this continue to work throughout the night. Om Shanti. Shanti. Thank you, everyone.